Whoa, I just threw that across the road. Don't mind me. Hello everyone and welcome to The Creative Urge. My name is Austin and I want to wish you a very happy new year. I know this video is being posted after the holidays, but I still wanted to wish some love, peace, and prosperity to all of you heading into 2021. I know that 2020 has been a difficult year with myself included, so I appreciate everyone's patience and everyone's love to make sure that I'm okay. I've just had a lot of life transitions that have happened all at once. Once. I moved out of my parents house. I got a new job. My partner moved in with me I just needed a little bit of a break to get myself settled and I've been very blessed despite everything going on in the world So I just want to thank everybody for being patient with me and sending all the love it is coming right back at you. In this video, I did not get much makeup this year, but I had to buy one thing for myself, and that was the NYX Diamond in Ice Butter Lip Gloss Set. I love this formula, and they had a huge sale going on at Ulta. I literally got 14 of these products for $25. Before we get into lip gloss, let's talk a little bit about NYX as a brand. NYX Cosmetics was started in 1999 by Tony Ko. She is a Korean American. She got into the makeup industry working for her parents. They were a part of the cosmetics industry and her goal was to bridge the gap between high quality products and consumers who didn't have a lot of money to buy them. She actually took out a loan from her parents to start the company and she started very small. She just started with jumbo eye pencils and they were marketed to consumers as department store beauty beauty while being sold at drugstore prices. The mission of the brand, as stated on their website, reads, a fierce community of independent spirits. We believe in unstoppable self-expression. Together, we empower every proud makeup junkie to live, dream, and experiment at full volume, always bringing you pro-level makeup, the most expert formulas, the highest grade pigments, and making them accessible for everyone, and never stopping our belief that the bright side is the right side. So really the brand's mission is about self-expression and making beauty accessible with high quality products at affordable prices. Now their headquarters are in Los Angeles, California. Their products are made in a number of locations, but they're typically made in China. I've also seen products made in Taiwan and I believe I was reading some of their eyebrow products are made in Germany, but most of their products are manufactured in China. I couldn't find any reliable sources about Nick's revenue. There was estimates from 35 to 500 million on different sites. That's not really reliable but I know that with L'Oreal owning the brand L'Oreal in 2019 made a revenue of 36.14 billion dollars L'Oreal is doing quite well <laughs> also I like to point out who the CEO of the company is so that we know who's making the big decisions who's on the executive board NYX Cosmetics is no longer owned by Tony Co. she actually sold the company to L'Oreal in 2014 and the CEO of L'Oreal has been Jean-Paul Agnon I believe that's how you say it Jean-Paul Agnon Ajon. he was appointed CEO in 2006 so he's been the CEO for about 14 years. He joined the company when he was 24 years old. He wanted to be a salesman and he wanted to travel and he states that he wanted to get into beauty because he talks about how it is like a, what did he say? A soft and creative, what did he say? He said, quote, I thought beauty marketing was very interesting and rich since it's not only analytical and strategic, but also sensitive, creative, and very attuned to emotion, image, and culture. So that was his reason of becoming the head of the brand. But actually recently he has stepped down as CEO and he has chosen his successor named Nicholas Aronimus, I believe his name is. What a name, right? He's set to take over in May 1st, 2021. There was a lot of controversy surrounding 
surrounding Nicholas Hieronymus's succession at L'Oreal, a lot of people were wondering like, why aren't you appointing a woman? There's been a man in this seat for so long and he basically said it was based on meritocracy, which means skill. So he basically was like, listen, it wasn't based on gender, it was based on skill. Jean-Paul said, quote, today women make up half of our board, more than one third of top management, and more than one half of the heads as brands. Their rise is irresistible. One day or another, a woman will run L'Oreal. But a lot of employers use that as a smokescreen to why they're not engaged in affirmative action efforts and employing and advancing people of diverse identity categories. When you look on their website, on their actual top executives, there's not equal representation there. There's 14 men and five women. The next thing I want to talk about is L'Oreal's environmental impact. I couldn't find anything specifically about the environmental impact of NYX other than a 2013 article in which their executive creative director was interviewed at that time. Her name is Christina, I think it's Bartolucci, and they were asking her questions about packaging and what her goals are for the packaging. The only standard that she really mentioned was being proud enough of the packaging to keep it in her purse. She didn't mention any environmental efforts at all. There's nothing wrong with aesthetics, but in terms of the environment, I would have liked to see like reducing carbon emissions, using paper packaging, you know, talking about packaging, not just in terms of aesthetics. Well, anybody likes good packaging. It changes the experience, but what about good packaging that benefits the planet? This is just one article that I could find about it in terms of NYX. This is not a sweeping judgment of them and their brand. I'm just sharing you information that I found. L'Oreal, on the other hand, they have a specific initiative regarding the environment. It's called the L'Oreal Fund for Nature Regeneration. This is what they have to say about it. This is on their official website. We believe reducing our impact is necessary but insufficient and in that the damage that has already been done needs to be repaired. To help tackle this problem, we want to go beyond our efforts to reduce our impact on biodiversity across our value chain and contribute to repairing natural ecosystems. This is why we are creating the L'Oreal Fund for Nature Nature Regeneration. By 2020, the L'Oreal Fund for Nature Regeneration will have invested 50 million euros to help regenerate nature. By 2030, the fund will restore 1 million hect acres of degraded ecosystems. By 2030, the fund will have helped capture 15 to 20 million tons of CO2 emissions, and we will have created hundreds of job opportunities. The initiative lists more things, and I encourage you to check it out on their website. I'll have it linked below. So I don't know exactly where they're getting those numbers, but it's nice to see that the company has some sort of initiative and is acknowledging it. I think it's really important for a brand as big as L'Oreal to do that. So again, I couldn't find anything necessarily on NYX, but it does look that L'Oreal does have some nature initiatives. Another thing I want to talk about is diversity. There's so many different things to take account of with diversity and I can't necessarily talk about it all, but I want to talk about Nix's kind of social media presence and their marketing. From what I could tell from their Instagram page, from their videos on YouTube, from their Facebook page, they do feature people of color in their ads and there is some Asian representation, but not tons of it. There's some women wearing head coverings with hijabs. I think that's some representation for different religious beliefs, different cultural believe they're definitely mostly light skinned people they do have some darker women pictured on their website but it's very limited that is common in a lot of advertising and media and marketing unfortunately we still live in this society where we place a lot of value on light skin their official website definitely features more diversity than their Instagram I'm not tallying things I don't have a statistical background in doing this I'm just sharing the information I have and again I encourage you to do more of your 
your own research, but I do want to talk about these things because I think they're important in buying from brands. So they have big initiatives with the LGBTQ plus community, which is really great. And they say they're firm believers in that. And they do try to picture some of that diversity on their site. Their shade ranges for their products on their website appear pretty extensive. A lot of companies have had issues with shade ranges really until like Rihanna's Fenty came forward and was like, hey, enough is enough. I didn't do enough of a deep dive to really determine whether or not NYX was like on that vibe but their shade ranges seem to have pretty light light and pretty deep deep on pretty much all of their products even their powders which is nice to see i don't see anybody with apparent physical disabilities. I know disabilities are not just physical and so you can't judge somebody on disability based on whether they physically appear to have one or not. I have bipolar disorder. You can say that I have a mental disability. Looking at me, you wouldn't know that. So when I say that there's people with no apparent physical disabilities, I don't see people missing arms. I don't see people in wheelchairs. I don't see people with hearing aids or people who need assisted technology. Now, I will say from a socioeconomic standpoint, I think their prices are pretty affordable, which I like to see in brands. Beauty and feeling good about yourself shouldn't just be reserved for people who can afford it. Do I think NYX is the cheapest brand? Absolutely not. And I don't think the quality matches their price point sometimes, but overall they're considered affordable. Also, what's really cool on their website is they have this initiative that none of their photos have retouching, which is very interesting to me. And I don't know other brands who are doing that. If you know any other brands, like let me know in the comments and I've looked on their website and their ads and their models clearly have skin pigmentation you can clearly see their pores do I think there's no retouching absolutely not I think that's a load of crock there is retouching that can be done that's made to not look like retouching but it's nice to see that initiative there and it's nice to see their products trying to speak for themselves I think that's really refreshing in a brand in terms of diversity too I don't see a lot of plus size people being represented I've seen some plus size representation but you know again you have to do the research for yourself the next thing is the question of vegan products vegan just means that you're not using animal byproducts so they have some vegan products on their site they actually have a tab dedicated to vegan products which I think is really amazing and great because a lot of sites don't necessarily have that they have this to say about it on their website as a part of our pledge to offer more conscientious choices our selection of vegan friendly faves is growing all the time formulated without any animal derived ingredients or products our vegan formulas still pack a punch when it comes to crazy rich pigment and high performance products. You will not be disappointed. Now, in terms of cruelty free status, there has been a lot of controversy. Long or the short of the story is L'Oreal claims to be cruelty free, but they're actually not. They still sell in mainland China legislation that require animal testing for international products not made in China. Those are still undergoing changes so they are definitely not cruelty free which means that NYX is probably not either. They are certified by PETA and PETA says they are cruelty free but there's no stringent standards for PETA on that cruelty free status. I'm gonna read an excerpt that explains this way better than me. I'll post my sources below. L'Oreal claims not to use any ingredients that have tested on animals if those ingredients have been tested on animals after March 13th and if they have been tested for cosmetic reasons only. Dear readers, this is a loophole. This is what allows L'Oreal to use animal tested ingredients in their formulations for new products. These new products consist of anti-wrinkle products, acne treatments, sunscreens, and other skin correcting or skin protecting miracle products. L'Oreal surely knows what strings to pull to have these products fall under medicated ingredients lists. Basically what L'Oreal says, if the ingredients in their product was tested after March 2013, then it's cruelty free. That's the ingredient. They could have ingredients that are before March 2013 that they're still using. And it says if they have been tested for cosmetic reasons only, okay? And here's where the thing is. They try to get their products approved by the FDA to consider them drugs. What this does, it prevents them being known as cosmetics. So them saying we don't test our cosmetic products, that is true. But if their products are considered drugs and not cosmetics, that's a loophole. So 
per 2020. L'Oreal is not cruelty free. They have loopholes and it is not true. Now I want to get into charities and causes. Again, they have a lot of money. I want to see that they're doing good things with this money. So I'm going to run down some of the things that I found about this brand. It is not the only things that they have done. I'm just highlighting what I could find and what I found interesting. In 2020, NYX itself, not L'Oreal, raised $30,000 in donations to Los Angeles LGBT Center. They also created the first ever virtual Pride March and Alley Education platform in partnership with that same center. They also have a Proud Allies for All Pride initiative, which aims to educate audience about what it means to be an ally of the LGBT community. They've also done a lot of packaging initiatives, rainbow packaging initiatives. I personally don't love the packaging initiative. Putting a rainbow on something doesn't necessarily mean that you support them, but I think in partnering with a center, donating money in those causes, doing educational efforts in addition to the packaging is really lovely. In May of 2020, they pledged that they donated to the Black Lives Matter movement and the Minnesota Freedom Fund, but the amount is unknown. I couldn't find an amount. So whether or not they actually donated and what efforts were there were unknown, but I do know that they have posts on their Instagram page talking about Black Lives Matter and speaking out against that. And again, they did make the pledge to donate. In 2017, they donated $6,000 to the Trevor Project, which is an organization that fights to keep suicide rates down amongst LGBTQ plus youth and they created a lipstick line to support the charity i absolutely love the trevor project growing up as an lgbtq youth member it can be a lot more difficult because you are different and sometimes all we need is for someone to to hear us and to listen to us and to try to understand us and i think the trevor project is an amazing organization that does that so that, those are some things that they've done in terms of brand controversies, I also think this is important in addition to the good stuff because you want to know the bad stuff too. This year, they had a huge controversy about a makeup tutorial that they posted where a creator for a Halloween tutorial was trying to make scales and used a dream catcher and used makeup over the dream catcher. Some communities hold the dream catcher as sacred, others do not. And at first there was kind of limited acknowledgement of that from NYX. They actually remained silent and just deleted the video. It Itself, which people obviously didn't feel like they had acknowledged that there was no public apology it wasn't until a famous drag queen named Alana Verley spoke up on social media where any sort of a public apology was made and she was like um that's not enough let's see you have some initiative and some education on this and also let me see you donate to an organization because your money will talk not your words I'm going to read this excerpt from the article. I will also link it below. The Canadian beauty industry's biggest employer has instructed retail employees to collect unnecessary personal information from First Nation customers who pay with a status card and a training document given to employees included a sample First Nations customer with an offensive name. Two employees of cosmetic stores owned by L'Oreal Canada say they were instructed last week to require anyone with a status card to disclose personal information at the cash register. One Toronto employee who asked not to be named for fear of losing their job said the company told them they must at least collect a customer's name and email address or risk being audited. Canadian law does not require First Nations people to disclose additional personal information when making a purchase with a status card. The training document also included a sample customer named Indian Demo Chief, which is extremely offensive to First Nation people. A company spokesperson told BuzzFeed it does not condone that name and has subsequently changed it in the document. When asked, L'Oreal denied this information needed to be collected even though the procedure was clearly laid out in their policies. They have the screenshots of the documents. And the team tested it with a Mohawk woman who visited L'Oreal stores on four occasions. L'Oreal also blamed the Indian chief on a translation error occurring from French to English. So basically, L'Oreal was just like, um, no, we don't collect that information, even though their documents in their stores clearly stated that that was happening. And BuzzFeed tested it out and that woman went in and that information was collected. And then in the training document, when they saw that anti-indigenous slur, they were like, oh, translation from 
English to French. Now, if you can translate all of your products, all of those ingredients lists, all of the descriptions and how to use those products, and you've translated the rest of the manual, you had a translation issue with this one thing. Basically not acknowledged. So again, I'm not trying to make a sweeping statement about the whole brand, but clearly with L'Oreal's history of indigenous profiling and also the Streamcatcher incident in October 2020, like there definitely needed to be some acknowledgement here and some reparation for American Indian communities. To my knowledge, that has not happened. If you have any other further information, if I got something wrong, please let me know. And then in September of 2019, they were accused of stealing lime crime swatches in a GIF that they posted. Basically on Twitter, the marketing person at NYX posted a GIF of different lipstick swatches watches and it was like rotating in between them and they were like what's your favorite lip color of NYX of all time? Jeffree Star sees it, gets on and is like wait a minute this gift is from Lime Crime. Why are you promoting your lipsticks and trying to get people to engage with your post and not even use NYX lipsticks? Now people were saying like that it was probably just the marketing person being a little bit lazy but from a legal perspective that's kind of a problem because they don't have rights to those photos and then it gets into the problem of the companies that post the gifts whether they have have legal rights to the photos. It's this whole mess. Finally, there was a controversy all the way in 2011. Basically, NYX held a sale for their anniversary. They said everything was going to be $1.20 on their website. The website didn't work. Nobody could get the sale. Nothing was listed. They ended up giving a 50% off coupon to everybody. So people were upset because they felt like it was a publicity stunt by NYX rather than actually get the deal that they promised for $1.20. So that is the only other controversy I could find. My takeaway is from my research research. NYX is a brand they're owned by L'Oreal. L'Oreal is a huge multi-billion dollar company. I buy L'Oreal products. L'Oreal owns a lot of companies. They own Maybelline. They own NYX. They own Garnier, Essie. L'Oreal owns a lot. So I would like to do better at buying more from indie companies or companies that aren't as big as L'Oreal. I think companies that have a lot of money have a lot of power and I don't like power being concentrated with a CEO at the top managing all that. I don't love that personally. But in terms of diversity efforts, in terms of NYX, I think they do okay. You know, I would say they do average. I think their efforts with the LGBTQ plus community is really great. Their shade range is pretty good. They could do better. In terms of L'Oreal as a company, they need way more representation of people of color. And I would also like to see more women in their executive upper management positions as well. Environmentally, I like to see that L'Oreal is making some strides. It seems like they have a whole branch dedicated to preserving the environment. I do know that there's a lot of plastic packaging in a lot of their companies. You can recycle a lot of this, but maybe seeing some more paper packaging, maybe seeing refillable cartridges, NYX as well. What else? Don't love how they're really not cruelty free. L'Oreal is a brand. Maybe NYX is, but if they're owned by L'Oreal, it doesn't matter because you're still supporting NYX and you're still supporting the parent company. Their mission, eh, okay, like self-expression, what company doesn't have that mission? What about the mission to like make the world a better place? What causes are you committed to? Maybe have that a part of your mission. So I think overall as a brand, would I purchase from NYX? I would. Is it going to be the first brand I purchase from? No, it's just not. There's other brands I want to give a chance to, but in terms of this lip gloss set, I bought it. I really like these glosses. They were cheap and I have them and so I'm going to enjoy them. Am I going to have NYX hauls and promote them and, you know, make this a staple? Probably not, but Brands change, companies change, and I'll have to continue doing my research. The goal of this is not in boycotting brands or saying that brands are bad or good. It's just to help inform our buying habits. And maybe if I do buy brands that are doing better things, then maybe I can splurge a little bit and buy something from NYX because I'm putting my money elsewhere. This is just about knowledge and education. This is not necessarily about judgment. I have my own opinions about what I would want to do or what I don't want to do, but that's up to me and you have to decide what's right for you. If you love Nix's brand, buy from Nix. I just am trying to give information and to challenge people to know something about the companies that you buy from. Know anything. Don't just buy the products. Know something about the company because knowledge is power. Money is power. Anywho, now that I've gone in that long soapbox about Nix's brand, I do want to get into these lip glosses and actually start trying the products. Wow, let's go. Now we're a little bit closer and calm 
comfier. So let's start trying these puppies on, huh? I'm just gonna take the gloss that I have on off. It's practically dry because I've been talking for so long. In here, I'm just gonna go from left to right. So the first shade that we have is Sorbet. I would describe it as like a coral, just by looking at the packaging, but let's put it on. Ah, all right. I think this is a pretty color. It's definitely reminds me of like Italian ice. Oh, I guess that's why it's called Sorbet. That makes sense. Moving on to the next one. Uh, this is the shade Vanilla Cream Pie. That sounds really tasty. This is definitely a cool tone pink. I'm not really a fan of cool tone lip colors on me. They tend to make me look very trashy, <laughs> but we're just gonna give it a go. Oh yeah. Oh wow, this is not flattering. You know what this reminds me of? Like those women that like tan so much and they use these lip colors and they look terrible. But anyways, I think I would mix this if I ever needed to add pink into something, a little cool tone pink. I definitely would not wear this ever <laughs> by itself, but I'm happy I have it. It's here and it's, it's a cool tone pink. What do you want me to say? <laughs> Taking this off. Cute. All right, the next color. I think this is creme brulee. I think this is the one I have. Yeah, this is my fave. Well, I say it's my favorite shade, but like I haven't tried any other shades. This is just the one I have and that I picked out and that inspired me to get this. Here we go. I think this is a very flattering tone. So I usually use this in like the center of a lip, but I definitely love this color. Moving on. This is called Madeline. Oh, Madeline. And it's like a toffee brown. I think that's right. Mm -mm -mm. I actually like this. I think I like this as a better shade for me than creme brulee. If I had to pick out of these lightest shades what I felt was like the most flattering on me, I think this one would be it. I really like that. Moving on once again. Four done, 10 more. Anywho, next shade. This is called Praline. Oh, I think I'm gonna like this shade on me. It's like a purpley brown. And on camera, there's definitely a bit of red in it. I don't know how to describe this. What the heck is this? Let me put it on, I'm gonna tell you. This is a lot lighter than I thought it was gonna be. I actually really like this color on me. I think this is a very flattering color on me. It definitely has some warmth to it. I don't know how to describe this color, but it's pretty. Okay, next one. This is the shade Ginger Snap. This looks like an espresso brown. Oh, wow. You know what? I thought these were gonna be like my least favorite colors the whole thing, cause I never wear brown, but I really like this color. I think this is like my favorite color this far. What do you think? I am so happy to have all these glosses. It'll help me diversify my looks. Ooh, some of them kind of stain a little bit. Not like bad, like I'm not like mad at it, but there's definitely like a stain on my lips. Okay, so this is tiramisu. This was the other one I tried. I believe this was a little bit too cool tone for me. Let's just try it out and see. It's like a um, a deep rose. It's definitely a cool tone pink. I don't think this is super flattering on me. It's like a deeper version of vanilla cream pie. Like these are like sisters. This one's definitely got a little bit more brown in it. Definitely cool tone. All right, so the next one. This is like a mauve and this shade is called Angel Food Cake. I love all the food names. It's making me hungry, especially because I haven't eaten dinner yet and it's like nine o'clock at night. Dedication, everybody. I'm dedicated to these videos, so I will starve for you. Here we go. I don't think it's as bad as the other cool toned glosses. It's okay. This is not like the color I would wake up to in the morning and be like, oh my God, so gorgeous. Like, let me put on this gloss now. The next two I'm really worried for. Here we go. This shade is called Marshmallow. I actually think this is really pretty. I think on girls who have like more of that purple tinge in their lips, I think this would be stunning. This is not gonna look good on me though. Wow, this is different. <laughs> I feel like I'm in like Xenon. I recently watched all the Xenon movies on Disney Plus just to like relive my childhood. And I feel like I'm like on stage with Protozoa with this color. Moving on. This is Eclair. Like that little French number? Whatever one I said was rose, I think this is actually the true rose. I don't know if I needed the whole set. No, this is not a rose when it's on. I would say tiramisu is more of the rose. This is like adding purple to that. We're down to the last four, the final four. We have strawberry cheesecake. I'm curious to see what this looks like. 
That is strawberry for sure. I, I don't think I'd ever wear this color, but they tried it. Who would this look good on? Who's the market? Who is she? I don't know. She's going to a brunch. It's summer. Eating a slice of watermelon, something like that. See these stain a little bit. You might need a, like a lip oil or something to get it off. Okay, this is super bright. I can't describe it. Oh, summer fruit. So this is gonna be another really bright summery shade. It's very similar to the last shade. Definitely has more of a red in it. I could see myself wearing this one a little bit more. I actually like the way it looks on camera a lot better than in person. On camera, it looks more of like a cherry. In person, it's a raspberry. The last two I'm actually really excited for. This one is called Red Velvet and it's kind of a vampy red. Mm, very sexy. Let's put this on. Oh, I love this. I love this shade. Yeah, this is pretty. I like this, but it definitely leans a little bit more berry still. The packaging and the actual lip color do not look the same. Look how much deeper the packaging is than the actual lip color. I'm not enthused about that. I would have liked that color, but I still think it's pretty and I would probably wear it. The final shade is called Devil's Food Cake. And this is like a vampy blood purple, vampy blood purple. Oh, I think I'm gonna love this. You know what this is? This is a wine color. If I could name this color, I would name it wine. Wine on me. Oh, whoa, whoa, take your time. All right, I'm done. Sorry, I do that way too much. Oh, I love this color. Oh, I love this color. On camera, it shows up a little bit more red in person. It's definitely more of a wine. So let's do my final thoughts and get this thing finally over with. I like six out of the 14 in here, almost half. The shades I liked the most were Sorbet, Ginger Snap, Madeline, Creme Brulee, Praline, and Devil's Food Cake. I think it's a pretty good collection. I love the gloss, it glides on easy. I can rub my lips together. The pigmentation is very good. This is pretty high coverage for a gloss. I think it's a good formula for the price. For the actual brand of NYX, nothing special there. I'm not gonna run to the store to buy from NYX. I'm going to do research on other brands that I feel like are bringing more to the table. I'm still gonna buy from the brand if I like something, but I definitely am going to look into other options. I hope you enjoyed trying the lip glosses on with me as much as I did. I don't really do try on videos and this was very fun for me to not feel any pressure and just being able to hang out with you guys. At this point, I'd like to invite you to like the video, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you on the next one. Mwah. Bye everyone.